Yes people, what's good? It's Daddy Abe again with another big video on the Akai S series samplers. This time I'm going to show you how to automate the filter on the S3000XL from your computer, from your dock. just want to shout out my man Iron Monkey, he showed me how to do this, cheers man. Uh, go check out his music, he's, on, he's got a label called Taped Up Records. Uh, this should work on the S1000, S2000, the 3000, 2800, all the others I think. I've not tried it so I can't guarantee but it should be the same idea. And I'm going to show you it using the filter that comes as standard on the S3000XL which is an analog minus 12 decibels per octave resonant low pass filter. Alright, if you've got the expansion bar with the extra filters, then you should have a high pass filter on there uh, and a minus 24 dB per octave. But I'm going to show you on one that comes as standard. Should, again, it should be the same idea if you've got the, the other filters. So, so, I've knocked up a quick beat. I've listened to this, it'll run a couple of times round uh, with the filter in its normal open position. Uh, and then the filter will start closing and opening automatically. Um, you should hear the effect. That's back to normal now. That's the filter back in its open position. So to set that up, to do something similar to what you just heard with the filter, um, if I can do this with one hand, you'd go single, edit, key group, and then filter there, filter one. If you've got the second filter, then it's in filter two there. But um, as you can see, I've not got it. Second filter board, IB three or four F not third. So filter one, and what you'd normally do um, is change this frequency value uh, to decide where the cut off is, where you're gonna cut the frequencies off above that. Uh, so if I just audition it with the enter play key, there's a sample, if I turn that from 99 down, you can hear it filtering. Uh, but to automate it, what you want to do is go next door over here, leave that where it is and go over here to where it says, well normally that would say velocity when you come in. Uh, but change that to external and that obviously means that your uh, external device your computer is going to be sending its instructions that's where the sample is going to be re receiving its instructions from and put this value here down to minus 50 like I've done there when you come in it'll be at zero uh, this this bit was the confusing part just um, setting that to minus 50 basically means that that's how far it's going to allow the filter to be controlled down to by the computer. So say if you'd only set that at 10, then the, the computer could only get it down as far as, as minus 10. Uh, but if you put it down to minus 50, that's the maximum, the lowest, then you can do whatever you want. Up here, that's edit all I've got on there. If you just want to um, filter one sample in the or one key group sorry uh, then you'd leave that on one you know right now I'm dealing with key group one uh, but if you change that to all then all the 
samples in that program, all the key groups in that program will get the same filter treatment, uh, which is what I wanted for this. Uh, resonance I've got to zero. I don't really mess with resonance much in this context. That's I think that's really useful for uh, if you're doing synthy stuff with filters, but for just your basics, like hip hop beats, um, I wouldn't really use that that much. Uh, and I think the LFO and the envelope and stuff that's probably beyond the scope of this video. We might look at them in another video. Now over here in your DAW, I'm in Studio One. What you want to do to send the instructions to the sampler is um, this is the MIDI pattern. Uh, I've actually played the performance in on Machine, um, which I've done a previous video showing you how to set that up. If you're interested, uh, I'm not going to get into that now, but I've recorded that MIDI pattern onto a new track. Well, onto the same track actually. I'm, recorded that MIDI pattern onto a track in Studio One and then to edit the automation you just double click on that um, pattern that track that recording MIDI recording that brings up the MIDI edit window your automation lane is down here at the bottom and the controller, the, the CC that you want is breath control, which is CC2, I believe. Uh, so you click this, um, it's that there, there's three dots. Click that, that brings up your list. Uh, you should have all your options down the right hand menu here. And you just, I can't add it again now because I've already added it, but you just find breath control, click on it, click add. Boom, it appears in that menu there. Close and breath control is there at the bottom. So that's the one that you click on. And then you just grab your paintbrush or your pencil, whatever it is, and you just draw in your automation lines. Um, to have the filter open fully, the lines down at the bottom. And then if, if you want to close it and filter out some frequencies, it, it comes up. It's as simple as that, really. I probably don't have to explain just how many applications there are for filters in music production. You probably already know. Um, but you can use them to filter out unwanted noise. Uh, as I said before, you can use them to create synth, synth effects. Uh, one really common technique in hip hop is um, say, if you've got a stereo sample of a band that's got a bass line in it already as well as some guitars or piano or whatever else uh, you're quite limited with your options for how to clean that up your mix so what a lot of people will do is have two copies of it one with a low pass filter on it so all you really get is the bass line through and the other one with a high pass filter so you're just getting everything else and then you can mix it how you want you can gate it compress it make the bass line really loud whatever you want to do um, that's really common. Obviously, dance music as well. Uh, you can get that fat boy slim effect. You know, most of his tunes will have that breakdown section with a vocal loop where it'll close the filter and it'll get really muffled. And uh, over a long build up section, it'll gradually open the filter, it'll get brighter and brighter as the drums come in and the synths and then the drop. Uh, this is that filter, you know, the Akai samplers were. That by Slim's thing and lots of other dance music producers as well. Obviously, Jungle was developed on the S1000, hip hop on the S900 and M50, as well as other gear, obviously, at the time. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot you can do with them. Uh, really diverse and quite distinctive as well. The sound of this filter is a really nice filter, um, like that analog sound. Um, yeah, let me know how you get on. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to do a video on. Uh, please subscribe to my channel and check out my other stuff. Look out for the next one. Peace.
Thank you.